Outside New Zealand, Jacinda Ardern is still the poster girl of the political left. Inside New Zealand, though, the love isn't uh, as strong for the Prime Minister. Auckland is only today easing out of a three-month lockdown, and there were angry, angry protests yesterday against vaccine mandates. So Ardern's popularity has taken a hit. Uh, in Australia, too, I think she deserves a lot less love. I've talked before about how it seems her government has been only too quick to throw Australia under the China bus in exchange for trade favours from China, a few good dog biscuits. For instance, New Zealand refused to join 14 other countries, democracies like us and Britain and the US, to say that the World Health Organization whitewash on how the virus started was uh, rubbish, excusing China. New Zealand's trade minister also had a shot at Australia when China rewarded it with an upgraded free trade deal. Um, if they were to, you know, follow us and, and show respect, I, I guess a little more diplomacy from time to time and, and be cautious with wording, um, then, then they too hopefully could be in a similar situation. New Zealand's foreign minister also advises us to give in to some of China's demands. Their bilateral relationship is a matter for them to resolve and work through. Do I believe that uh, there might be an opportunity for New Zealand to create a different environment to have a conversation? Yes, I do. And now another sellout. New Zealand says China should be allowed to join an 11-nation trading pact, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, when Australia is saying, well, no, not while China bends the rules by punishing Australia with trade bans, simply to knock us into shape. Sold out again by our supposed ally. Sold out to a dictatorship. Joining me is Dr Muriel Newman, a former business representative, a former politician, right of centre, now head of the think tank, the New Zealand Centre for Political Research. Muriel Newman, thanks for joining us again. It seems sometimes that Ardern's government does choose China over Australia, won't stand firm with democracies against this dictatorship, but am I being unfair? No, I don't think you are. I think it's a concern that we have in New Zealand as well. I mean, with regard to this latest situation, from what I understand, if a country meets the standards and is willing to engage, then any country can apply to join this Trans-Pacific uh, trade deal. And as I understand it, the UK has applied and Taiwan has applied and America is thinking about it. But of course, China has put its name forward. And you have to say, if it's having a, a dispute, a trade war with Australia, one of the key players, then it shouldn't have even got that far. It should have had to sort itself out first it should have dropped the sanctions with Australia and started a dialogue with your ministers. Well, particularly when those trade sanctions are not really a trade dispute in one sense, I know we're taken to the World Trade Organization, it really is no more than uh, bullying to knock, you know, to knock us into line, to get us to shut up about all sorts of things like human rights. It's, it's ridiculous. Uh, I, I don't get why Jacinda Ardern doesn't think that this is a, an issue where she is side by side with us. No to China until you start acting like a decent nation in these uh, issues. Now, Muriel Newman, I, I mentioned that uh, Jacinda Ardern's popularity in New Zealand has fallen lately. Now, I'm not trying to fool anyone. She's still quite popular, no doubt about that. Um, but the latest Roy Morgan poll shows Labor support has dropped six points to just under 40%. Why would that be? Well, look, I think it's the agenda that she's rolling out. And um, I think it's taken a lot of New Zealanders by surprise. Uh, she's got an unmandated um, agenda. So, uh, for example, the vaccine mandates. Before the election, she assured New Zealanders that there wouldn't be any mandates. And now, of course, there are. And uh, next week, as I understand it, the mandates come in for health workers, teachers, firefighters, and so on. And yesterday, with that protest outside of Parliament, there was a lockdown in Parliament. It's the first one in 50 years. So things are definitely turning. And uh, even my article this, this week, my newsletter, I had the headline, you know, New Zealanders don't love Jacinda anymore. And, and it's true. There's more and more people asking for her to resign. 
But the, probably the most important one, though, Andrew, is this uh, tribal agenda that she's rolling out. And of course, she didn't campaign on it. And it was only after she got 50% of the vote, then I think the Maori caucus took, got the bit between their teeth. And uh, they're trying to replace democracy with tribal rule. And it sounds absolutely extraordinary, but there's a health bill in front of Parliament right now that will abolish the community basis of our health system. It'll centralise it in Wellington with a Maori health authority with the right of veto over the entire system. And New Zealanders will be segregated by race for their health care. And of course, the Three Waters, that's another one where Maori control of wastewater, stormwater and freshwater and all the councils were told it was going to be voluntary. And yet on the day, uh, because 60 out of 67 didn't agree to it, then now it's going to be mandatory and it will probably be passed early next year. So it's all these sorts of you things know, make Newman, us it's, think it's authoritarian. <laughs> I just think it's so sad, you know, particularly when you see that whole, the high rates of intermarriage anyway. I mean, you know, who doesn't have some... Uh, you know, a lot of people would have also European ancestry as well. But this ridiculous insistence on race when we should be colour blind, I just think it's uh, coming to peak stupidity in New Zealand. And I just think it's so sad. Mira Newman, thank you for your time.